today I'll be discussing the topics and skills that you need to learn if you want to become a master of the JavaScript programming language. Now, I've broken these skills into four categories. We have beginner, intermediate, advanced, and then finally expert or master level. Now if you're a beginner, you can treat this video just like a curriculum where I'll tell you all of the things you need to learn and the order in which you should learn them. Whereas if you're an intermediate or someone who's a bit more advanced, then I'll likely share with you some topics or skills you haven't heard of before that you may want to consider learning just to level up your skill that much more. If you are looking to dive into the essentials of JavaScript, you can check out this free comprehensive guide from HubSpot. This guide will help you learn about data types, variables, object-oriented programming, and a lot more. It's ideal for beginners or anyone who wants to refresh their JavaScript skills, and I've left a link to it in the description. The best part is it's completely free, and I want to give a massive thank you to HubSpot for sponsoring this video and providing great, free programming resources. All right, so let's get into it here. A quick mention that all of the skills that I list here will be in the description in case you want that entire list or something to follow along with. And also I'll be referencing that list. If you see me looking over to the side, that's what I'm doing. I'm just making sure I don't forget any of the skills that I have. Now let's start with these beginner or basic skills. This is designed for any of you that are just starting out and you wanna to get to a point after learning all of these where you're confident writing code before you move on to the more advanced skills. This is really the fundamentals of the language. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to learn, variables. What is a variable? How does it work? What's the point of it? We've got three main ways to make variables here, var, let, and const. You wanna understand the difference between those keywords. Then we're going to be looking at data types, things like strings, numbers, boolean, uh, null, undefined. You want to know what those types are and the differences between them. Then we're going to be looking at operators. So there's different types of operators. We have arithmetic operators. This is adding, subtracting, division, multiplication. We have assignment operators, things like the equal sign, plus equal to, minus equal to, plus plus, all assignment operators. We have comparison operators. This is something like the double equal sign, the triple equal sign, or the strict equal, less than or equal to. How do we compare different values and which values equal what? Then we have logical operators like and or not, which tie in with the next topic, which are conditionals. How do you create a condition? How do you chain them together, etc. Now that brings us to control flow. With control flow, we're talking about if and else statements, switch statements, how we handle different areas of the code or how we go into different blocks based on a specific condition or something that we're checking. That then leads us into basic data structures. So we know the simple ones we talked about before. Now we're gonna wanna learn about arrays. We're gonna wanna learn about objects and the concept of mutability. Mutability means that some objects can change, others cannot. We wanna know which types are mutable, which are not mutable, and how that can cause issues in our code. Next, we're gonna be looking at loops. So the for loop, the while loop, the do while loop. When do you use which of these loops? How do you loop over a structure? How do you loop over an array? You really wanna understand that huge concept for pretty much every programming language. Next, we're looking at functions. How do you declare a function? How do you invoke a function? What is a parameter? What is an argument? What is a return type? What type of code goes inside of functions? How do you utilize them effectively? Next, we're looking at common methods. Common methods meaning uh, things that we can perform on different data types. For example, converting something into a string, splitting a string, making something uppercase, making something lowercase useful to know at this point in time. After that, we're gonna be looking at even more data types, things like sets and maps, how those work and the efficiency of them. Then we're gonna be getting into advanced functions. So here is where we're gonna be talking about arrow functions, default parameters, rest parameters, and comparing that with our normal functions. This now leads us nicely into scope. How are different variables defined? How do we locate different things that maybe have the same name? In what scope can we access certain pieces of information? A bit more of an advanced topic. Then we're gonna be looking at DOM manipulation. Now you might've done this a little bit earlier, but things like selecting elements in an HTML page, modifying them, handling user input, even though this is based on JavaScript, to be good at JavaScript, you have to understand the interaction with HTML and the DOM. After this, I'd recommend looking at event handling, so things like adding an event listener, handling clicks, and then in this context, we're also gonna be looking at the this keyword. How does this work in the context of an arrow function versus a normal function? 
specifically as it relates to events. Even here, things like form submissions, important to be looking at. Lastly, in the beginner section, I know there's a lot of stuff here, we're gonna be looking at basic debugging. So how do we run a debugger? How do we actually solve problems, find errors in our JavaScript code? This is a lot of stuff, but if you know everything I mentioned here, you are well on your way to becoming an intermediate JavaScript developer, and you have the fundamentals of the language down, and probably 90% of the code you need to write is gonna fall into those different categories. Now that's a little bit overwhelming, but you wanna learn all of those different topics, and yes, I am classifying those in the beginner category. So now we're moving from beginner to intermediate. These topics still are quite important. You definitely need to understand them, and they're gonna allow you to really create some more complex apps, implement some more logic, and just be much better with JavaScript to the point where you might actually be able to land a job and you're gonna be a lot more capable of a developer. Now starting here, we have error handling. So try, catch, finally, how you properly handle errors in your code. Next, we move on to important operators. So things like null coalescing, optional chaining, the ternary operator. There's a few of these kind of magic or unique operators in JavaScript that you should understand at this level. Now we're moving into asynchronous programming, something that's definitely a bit more complex, gets quite a few people stuck and frustrated, but is so important to understand at a pretty deep level. So things like callbacks, promises, the async and await syntax, how you use this correctly and how you actually utilize asynchronous code. Next, we're moving on to APIs. So how do you call APIs? How do you use the fetch API? Uh, working with JSON data, making HTTP requests, receiving response data, handling errors within your different requests. This really is something you need to get to that more intermediate level. Next, we have object-oriented programming with JavaScript. So understanding this keyword, new, constructors, functions or methods, things like the class syntax, and then how that relates with the prototypical inheritance. So in JavaScript, we have prototypes. You're gonna wanna understand that, especially as it relates to object-oriented pro programming, sorry. So things like the prototype chain, creating prototypes, the inheritance patterns, what is a prototype? That's kinda where you need to start here, and it's quite different than some other programming languages. Next, we're moving into the module system. So things like the ES6 module, so using that import export syntax. And then you're also gonna wanna understand maybe the older syntax like common JS, require module.exports. You're gonna see that all over the place. You need to understand how to separate your code out, how to import it, how to export it, etc. Finally, to wrap up this section, we're gonna be looking at some more advanced tooling, things like NPM, basic Webpack, Babel, and then finally, sorry, one more here that I forgot, functional programming basics, so things like pure functions, higher order functions, closures, things like dot map, dot filter, dot reduce, how you use those in that slightly different style of programming that you may not be used to. So that wraps up the intermediate section. Again, quite a few topics here, but these are quite important. Fortunately, once you understand this and the beginner, you have pretty much everything you're gonna need for day-to-day -day JavaScript programming. And what's gonna be coming next is quite a bit more advanced and is only gonna be used in specific scenarios. Still important to understand, but you can definitely get by with what I've mentioned so far. Moving forward, we get into the advanced section. Now, full disclosure here, a lot of the stuff that I'm about to mention, I don't use every day. In fact, I hardly have to use a lot of the stuff that we're gonna be mentioning in these next sections. And it kind of proves the point that what I showed you before is really what you need to get by and to be quite good at JavaScript. Here is just going to that extra level, but I know a lot of you wanna hear about it. So let's get into these topics. First, advanced asynchronous patterns. So things like micro tasks, macro tasks, the event loop, web workers, really understanding this at a deeper level and how to perform some more optimizations. Next, we have advanced DOM manipulation and web APIs, things like the intersection observer, web sockets, local storage, session storage, etc. Next, we're moving into state management. This is where we understand state, things like Redux, how you implement that in an application, understanding the context. Next, we have advanced object-oriented programming. So things like factory functions, mix-ins, compositions. Moving on, we have some more functional programming, immutability, recursion, function composition, currying, some topics that you probably don't need to use every single day, that you, but that you wanna be aware of. Next, advanced error handling. So things like custom error types, error tracking and tracing. Moving on, we have performance optimizations, probably one of the more important ones on this list. Things like lazy loading, debouncing and throttling, memoization. These are more advanced techniques that you're gonna use in these larger applications when scalability becomes more of a concern. Next, we have security essentials, understanding XSS, CSRF, 
cores, content security policies, specific headers you might be having as a part of your request, things that you've probably run into errors before, not really understood, and now you want to actually really understand what these topics are. Now we have testing as well. Maybe you want to put this in intermediate, but for me, I find testing to be a little bit more complex, especially when you're using some of these more advanced features. And that leads us into unit testing, integration testing, end to end testing. And then of course, learning testing frameworks, things like Jest, Mocha, Chai, whatever one you decide or whatever one you need to use for your job or the project you're working on. Finally, we're getting into build tools and automations. So things like advanced Webpack, Gulp, NPM scripts, how you start taking all of these things, combining them together and using them in a larger project. There is so much stuff in this JavaScript ecosystem and in this advanced section, you start to learn some more of that tooling and how you can use that to build out some projects that are a little bit more advanced. That wraps up the advanced section, some important topics here, but not that you necessarily need to master again, if you want to get by in JavaScript, but you're watching this because you want to be a master. So let's move on to the next section. Now we are moving into the expert or master level features. Now the truth is once you get to this point, there's so many different things you could be learning and you're probably going to be specializing in a few different frameworks or technologies related to JavaScript. So it's difficult for me to make this concise because if you really are a true expert or master, you could probably learn whatever you want. And there's like a million things that could be considered expert that I could put in this category. So I've tried my best here, but if you think I forgot anything, then leave a comment down below. Let's get into it though. First design pattern. So understanding more about system design, structuring your code, things like the module pattern, factory, singleton, the observer pattern. We then have advanced state management, things like state machines, the Redux middleware, just getting into that at a deeper level. Next, we have advanced performance optimizations, things like code splitting, tree shaking, web assembly. Then we go on to type systems, things like TypeScript, Flow. You're gonna wanna know those if you're gonna be good at JavaScript because you're gonna see them all the time. Then we get into server side JavaScript. So not necessarily something you have to learn, but a specialty that many people are probably gonna get into. So things like Node.js, Express, RESTful API design, GraphQL, things related to JavaScript, and again, kind of specific packages or frameworks you could be learning. Then we move into full stack developments. You might wanna be learning things like the MERN stack, server side rendering, all these different libraries that you can use to create JavaScript applications. That kind of leads me into the next one, modern frameworks. So in-depth understanding of things like React, Angular, Vue, whatever one you decide to use, you wanna be really, really good at those if you're gonna call yourself an expert in JavaScript or in that specific category. Now, lastly, we're getting into larger topics like architecture and scalability. So generally speaking, system design, microservices, load balancing, caching strategies, CDNs, domains, whatever you want to say here, anything that kind of fits that broader scale system design category, that's what I'm discussing. Now, that was a lot of topics that I listed in this video. Now, hopefully I didn't intimidate you too much. You do not need to learn all of these, but if you really want to get to that expert advanced level, these are the type of topics you're going to need to know. Now, full disclosure, I don't know all of these topics. Most people don't know all of them. You really can get by with about 50% of the topics that I had on this list, and you can create some really awesome applications without being a true expert or master. Anyways, with that said, guys, I will wrap up the video here. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.